We're gonna go into all the keys behind strength training for field hockey, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com, and if this is your first time to the channel, and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna become a better field hockey player, you wanna get a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, dominate out on the field, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you smash that notification button so we can help you become a beast. So in the sport of field hockey, I believe that there's a significant amount of underdevelopment when we're talking about different athletes and different positions specifically. And I believe especially when we're talking about women, there tends to be an underdevelopment from that resistance-based training. A lot of coaches are still in that old school mindset where they don't really wanna push women in the weight room. They don't wanna get them out. They talk to the parents about getting big and bulky. They're concerned they're gonna lose speed. They're concerned that they're gonna turn into these, these massive bodybuilders. And they don't recognize that especially in women's field hockey, there can be a massive amount of ground that you can make up when you get involved with resistance-based training, when you get involved with sports performance-based training specific to field hockey. And I think that even in the men's game, I just returned from the Tokyo Olympics and I was fortunate enough to sit down and watch a lot of the men play. And I noticed that a lot of the men are really fast. They're really aggressive. The speed on their shots is absolutely incredible. They have really good strength endurance later in the game and their striking capability is phenomenal and on top of that they have incredible dynamic trunk control and i noticed the exact same thing with all the women at the top i noticed that the best women in field hockey at that elite level the dutch the aussies these women were walking around the village just jacked out of their mind and they had really good speed and it made me think about other sports like swimming like women's soccer where there's still a little bit of an underdevelopment from the female perspective where women still aren't really getting into the weight room and the reason why the men can hit harder, can run a little bit faster, is because they've got more muscle mass. So what can women do, especially for field hockey, to get to the top? So we're gonna go into those four key elements for strength training for field hockey, and that fourth key factor is going to be strength endurance. When we're talking about field hockey, we have to recognize that the games are long. They're very challenging. They're very challenging cognitively. So there's a lot of speed involved. There's a lot of running. There's a lot of agility going into the entire game. There's a ton of coordination. There's a ton of skill work. When we're talking about resistance-based training, we have to take women and men that are participating in field hockey Having strength endurance in the weight room is a pivotal factor. So we wanna make sure that we're utilizing isometrics. We're doing some unilateral work. We might be doing some timed work on the Olympic weightlifting movements. We might be doing some really big drop sets or really long duration sets. A set that might be a minute of walking lunges or a minute and a half of walking lunges. Now, we have to look at field hockey players as athletes that need to have that cognitive skill later in the game so they can handle that stress, they can handle what they're gonna be doing with that specific ball work. So train strength endurance, but make sure it's programmed effectively and make sure that you take your various positions and recognize that some of the midfielders are gonna be running a lot more, so they might need a little bit more strength endurance than the defenders. Same with the men and women who are gonna be on the offense. They can be a little bit more focused on that speed strength, whereas the midfielders might need a bit more of that strength endurance. And then that's gonna take us into that third key factor behind strength training for field hockey, and that's gonna be mobility. So right off the bat, we've gotta talk about what is mobility. Mobility is going to be passive flexibility in various joints with stability. So we've gotta have active, movement through a large range of motion in specific joints. And in the sport of field hockey, I'm immediately starting to think about a reverse shot or a reverse pass or a block tackle. Think about the knuckles being down on the ground. Think about the hips being extremely low and that hip flexion that these athletes have to get into to get down into that block tackle position or a reverse pass or a reverse shot and the strength that they have to have to hold those positions. So we need to train field hockey players through full range of motion with various positions in their ankles, their hips, their knees, their lower back, even their upper back, so that they have tons of mobility through large range of motion so that they can apply a large amount of force to dominate their opponents. So mobility plays a pivotal role in taking your field hockey skills and then enhancing them. If you have to train specific skills, but you don't have the strength to hold your hips a little bit lower, it becomes a little bit more difficult 
to hold those different skills and to hold those different stick positions. So train mobility effectively, make sure we're doing full range of motion. We can do goblet squats, front squats, back squats, single leg squats. All of these movements are key to improving mobility throughout the hips so that we can hold those block tackles effectively. That takes us to our number two aspect behind strength training for field hockey, and that is going to be my favorite term, dynamic trunk control. I wanna be known as the guy on YouTube that makes dynamic trunk control popular. This is a key aspect, especially if we're talking about sports where we're running with an object. Think about American football, think about rugby, think about lacrosse. We are running with an object. Think about field hockey, we're running with a ball, but if we have our head down, while we're dribbling, we aren't gonna be able to see the field. We aren't gonna be able to see the moves that we need to make to take advantage of our opponents. So if we have a stable trunk, that's gonna help us run a little bit more effectively. That's gonna give us that dynamic trunk control. And if we can run more effectively, we can carry that stick a little bit more effectively. If we are doing something like a block tackle, now we have that core strength to be able to hold that position more stable and we can also cut more effectively. So we have to train dynamic trunk control. This can go into something as simple as a power snatch, a power clean, an overhead lunge. All of these exercises are phenomenal movements that we can utilize to drastically enhance our dynamic trunk control. And then that's gonna take us into that number one key element for field hockey, and that's gonna be speed-based training. So when we're on the field hockey field, if we have an athlete that is extremely fast and his or her skill level is comparable to an opponent's, but they're faster, they're going to dominate. So what can we do? We can train unilateral strength. We can train our hamstrings a little bit more effectively. Think about you know, Nordic hamstring pulls. We can work on lengthening our stride. We can work on our actual specific technique. And that's one key aspect that I've seen that is drastically lacking in field hockey is that athletes might do speed work. They might go to a speed school. They wanna get faster and they wanna do all this stuff, but they're never actually doing plyometric work, speed-based work with their stick. They're actually learning how to run effectively. They might be learning technique to a point, but then when they carry their stick, it's completely thrown out the window. So it's important to teach these athletes how to move rapidly, how to move with speed while utilizing their stick. This is an example that I've used when I'm talking about ice hockey. If I have a speed skater and they're racing against an ice hockey player, the speed skater is going to win. But if you put a speed skater and an ice hockey player on a rink and you give the speed skater a stick, he or she is likely going to lose to the ice hockey player because they've learned how to move faster using that stick and that's a key factor here with field hockey if we can learn how to enhance field hockey players speed in the weight room and we can learn how to enhance their plyometric movement by still holding that stick that's also going to lead to greater speed on the field when they're running when they're handling the ball when they're trying to make better moves and better decisions so make sure that you're understanding all four of these key elements that go into strength training for field hockey and if you need help if you're struggling to piece together a program and you're sitting there going where do i start how can i take strength endurance and actually train strength endurance and at the same time train speed and train dynamic trunk control and train mobility we've got a program if you click on the link down below you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our strength training for field hockey program it's going to help you dominate your opponents this year during the field hockey season if you want more content around sports performance click on this card right here until next time guys peace